Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Ashton, the founder and CEO of Active Solutions AI, where we provide what's arguably the most sophisticated conversational AI on the market. And I wanted to break down the conversational AI um, in the back end of Go High Level, so basically in the settings area, which was at one point in time not very sophisticated. You couldn't do a lot with it, and it made a lot of mistakes. Um, now we've made multiple significant upgrades and it's uh it's phenomenal the improvement um that we've made since uh this has actually started a, a few months ago so i'm going to go over the difference first between this and the conversational ai in the workflows because i think uh, a lot of people have uh, confusion over that specifically so first i'll go over the difference all right so the conversational AI on the back end this is where you're going to be using off suggestive and autopilot so suggestive is basically yeah, I'll give you an example. So if you click this, and let's say you're receiving messages via SMS or wherever you have it active, um, it could be just about anything, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, uh, it's going to pop up and it's gonna give you options where you will manually select a response. So for example, let's say someone replies no here. Um, this is an actual conversation that's happening in the system too. Uh, so someone will reply no, and it's gonna give you this response, the gotcha, sounds like AI could really enhance your operations, et cetera. That would come up as an option right here where you could select it, but it would give you one or two or three different options of responses to choose from and you would manually select it. When you would actually need this, I have no idea. Um, maybe it's for teams that would like to review the AI response before it actually goes in, uh, which is kind of understandable, but I don't think it's necessary. So uh, next you have autopilot. Autopilot is when you can't really deactivate it. It's basically always active it's always turned on on whatever channels you have selected so in my case i have instagram and facebook selected um this means anytime someone sends a message it is going to reply it's either going to be using the intent of the appointment booking bot or the general question and answer bot a couple ways a couple things you can do so the bot settings you want to make sure that your response time is um, programmed accordingly and you want to make sure that it can send a decent amount of message messages because you don't want it to stop uh, right before it books an appointment. Um, next thing, you're going to want to go to configure intents. And what I would do is turn autopilot on. Um, if it were up to me. You can also use this for uh, chat widgets, which I will go over. So you're going to go to configure intents. You're going to edit this prompt. And this is the general Q&A prompt. Now, you're going to want to give this uh, as much information about your business as possible because the general Q&A is exactly what it sounds like. It is a question and answer bot when someone asks a question in the DM about your business or about the service, whatever it might be, it is going to provide an answer to that question. And it's going to use a combination of what you provide it, the information that you provide, and qualifying questions. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is that there is a maximum of how many words you can put in here. There is something you can do to get around that, though. If you go to custom values, you can create a custom value, right? If you uh, actually, I'll scroll down in here. Let me cancel this, I'll go into this one. If you create a custom value like this, so this is a custom value. You can paste as much information in a custom value as you want, but when you paste the custom value in here, it's only going to use however many characters are here. So um, under 20, uh, maybe around 20, maybe more. I don't know. Um, however many characters is included in this, including the underscores and the spaces, et cetera, is a, how much space it's going to take up um, and how many words it's going to take up. But you can put as much information in the actual custom values. You can put a full paragraph and it's actually only gonna register the number of characters that this has, if that makes sense. So you utilize the custom values, put the bulk of information about your business or whatever it might be into the custom values. It's gonna be, it's gonna make a significant difference because the more information you provide it, the better. Um, now, in this case, obviously we like to ask qualifying questions and, and push it in the direction of booking an appointment. And um, that is when I believe we're going to get the best result. So next you have bot training. This is where you can upload links. You can upload Google Docs, which is actually a smart thing to do, uh, website links, et cetera, so that it can pull information from this whenever people ask questions. So it's going to use a combination of artificial intelligence and the links that you provide. Now, it used to just provide the links. And then whenever you would turn uh, autopilot on, the bot would basically say, oh, uh, you know, I don't... I don't have the enough information to answer your question. So that doesn't occur anymore because now we have actual artificial intelligence connected. It's not just a FAQ bot. It's going to use a combination of the information you provide here and what you prompt it. So make sure you uh, provide a good, really good prompt. And then you can go to bot trial and you can actually test it out. Up here, you can select between general questions and appointment booking. And you can cycle between each one. Um, so for example, if I go appointment booking and I go, hey, 
I am interested. No, I do not. This is just an example of how this would work. So it's, it's going through and it's asking the qualifying questions accordingly, and then it's going to um, eventually give me to book an appointment, and I'll keep going through this. All right, so um, currently I have it set up to where it books an appointment directly onto the calendar, which is something you, you can do now. The problem is this is still in beta uh, and it has a lot of time zone issues. So I would not use, it's a really cool concept. I would not utilize it yet because it's not gonna work how you want it to. So for now, you're gonna wanna send the link. Okay, so to recap on this bot, this bot is always turned on when you have it in autopilot. It is always going to respond. It does not include a workflow and is configured between bot training links that you input and the prompts that you put in the general Q and A and the appointment booking. Now the other conversational AI, which is the workflow conversational AI is a little bit different. Um, and some people would ask, you know, why wouldn't you just use the other one? Why would you just, uh, why would you create this complex workflow um, that is so hard to build and that hurts everybody's head? The main reason is because you have so much more control over this one. Um, when you have the autopilot one turned on, it's just always on. If you create a good workflow that is executing um, the same things, you're able to enroll it and unenroll it into certain campaigns when certain questions are answered, or you can deactivate the campaign when an appointment is booked so it can go into appointment reminders. Um, you can uh, throw people into no-show sequences, uh, create conversational AI no-show sequences. So you can create uh, multiple different versions or variations of your bots and use them for multiple different scenarios. You cannot do that with the backend bot. I get that question all the time. They're like, oh, well, why wouldn't you just use the, the autopilot conversational AI? This is why. You want to have control over your business. You'd not want a bot running around in your, well, unless uh, I think it's viable um, and useful in with a chat widget. Um, Instagram, and Facebook, but I don't think it is with SMS um, because if an appointment is booked and you have autopilot turned on and then the bot is going to keep reaching out to that person trying to get them to book an appointment, it's just not what we want. So because that's annoying if they're trying to get them to appoint, book an appointment when they've already booked. So we use the workflows so that we can have more control over the situation. Um, now how this works is you have these actions that also provide conditions. And I go over this a lot in previous videos, but I'll briefly go over it now. Um, you update the personality and exactly how you want it to behave. You give it additional instructions, which you can also utilize custom values for. And then it provides a question. Well, you have to provide a question that you want it to ask. You have a timeout period. You choose the channel you want it to operate in. And then you have these branches where it's actual artificial intelligence that is determining which scenario is happening. So for example, um, it will register, AI will look and make sure that a question was actually answered or maybe they answered a question in a negative manner and it's able to register that um, and have a, and, and basically pipeline it into a certain condition based on their response or whether or not they responded or just conditions in general, which is pretty cool. So that is how these work. So again, autopilot bot, really a completely separate bot has nothing to do with the workflow bots, but the workflow bots we have more control over. We can use them for um, for various use cases. Now, one of the cool things that you could do is go to conversational AI and turn on, not chat widget, live chat, put it on autopilot, right? And then we're gonna go to configure intents and we're gonna program both of these bots. So you wanna turn this on, you want to make sure it's sending the appointment link. You're going to select the calendar accordingly that you created. Make sure you edit both prompts. Now, this is a test account that I'm using, so I don't have any of these prompts uh, edited, but you want to make sure you edit the information here and edit the information here. Go to bot training. Make sure you update the, the links that you need. Probably your website link would be a good one, maybe a Google Doc or anything that would give more information about your business. Test out the bot here and make sure you're under appointment booking because this is the main one that's, that we're going to be utilizing. Go to bot settings and then just make sure down here we don't have a two-minute wait time. We want probably five to ten seconds. 
and we'll change that as well. Now, once you have this created and it's turned on for live chat, we're able to go to sites, chat widgets, and we have this bubble here that we can customize and we can create. Now for chat type, you're gonna use live chat. And now, uh, make sure you customize it really good on the first time because you have to uh, choose a different embed link, um, whether you're embedding into a, a WordPress site, a Wix site, whatever it might be. Uh, you have to, it's going to give you a new embed link every time you make changes. So spend a lot of time, make this look exactly how you want it to change the image, change the color, whatever it might be. Once you're, you know, ready to go and you like how it looks, you're going to go to get code. You can either do a, you can do a direct embed on WordPress too, but I think it's easier just to grab the code. So you'll get the code. It's going to give you an embed code. You're going to copy this bad boy, and then you're going to go to your website and you're going to embed it into the uh, footer section of the website. And now you're going to have an active chat widget that is going to be um, actually a very sophisticated conversational AI. So hopefully this was um, helpful. If you would like a more extensive tutorial on building the chat widget alone, um, let me know in the comments, but for now, hopefully this was a good description explanation of the difference between, um, the various conversational AI usages that you have in go high level. Also, don't forget to su subscribe for more content. And if you go below, there's a 100% free community, um, that includes a decent amount of courses and a lot of information. Um, the community has almost 800 people in it now. There's multiple different business owners in there, uh, SaaS, marketing agency owners, you name it. Uh, a lot of people are posting questions in there. It's Again, it's 100% free. Um, there's also a snapshot below with all of my conversational AI content that you could uh, check out if it's something that you would just like to port into your go high level and start using right away.